Coming up on Tech Thing, best of 2017, we got a list and we've checked it twice. Is the spot the perfect alarm clock? Yes, Amazon's got one last echo this year. VPN speed, fast VPNs, and hey, let's talk about why your refrigerator might be killing your computer. All coming up on Tech Thing. You know what's better than a pony under the tree this Christmas? Supporting Tech Thing. If you love this show, please consider contributing at patreon.com slash tech thing because we are brought to you by viewers just like you. Thanks so much. I'm Shannon Morse. And I'm Patty Norton. And this is Tech Thing, where we make technology behave. Mm-hmm. <laughs> little old school for you there. Little old school. <laughs> As 2017 draws to a close, we are looking forward to geeking out at CES and throughout the new year for all y'all. Yay! But just for fun this year, we thought we'd list our best of 2017, the new products that came out this year that just stuck with us. This isn't one of them. That is not one of them. <laughs> That's my review later in the show. That's an alarm clock <laughs> yes, you can it is. talk to. <laughs> but I mean, you can talk to any alarm clock, but this one, people won't stare at you and be like, are you okay? <laughs> So what is number one on our list? I gotta say, for me, big game changer this year, AMD's Ryzen uh, CPU launch. Oh, More cores, choice. less money, and I feel that they've spurred Intel into actually caring about enthusiasts and power users again. Yeah. How cool is that? My primary desktop is running a Ryzen 7 1800X CPU. So pretty. And I, you know, I gotta say, you know, from, from over the top killer products, the $5,000 uh, iMac Pro, uh, Apple's latest professional machine, uh, is impressive. I mean, it's kind of insane to think of an eight-core Intel Xeon W processor stuffed behind a monitor. Yeah. But for my money, in the more affordable realm, I can actually justify the cost of Dell's Inspiron 27 7000 all-in-one with its Ryzen 1700 CPU. Not as many cores, not as much maximum memory, not as high a resolution of monitor, but again, yeah, we reviewed this a few but weeks ago. But it's pretty! It's also fast. Yes, it's very fast. I, I want to replace I want to replace the all-in-one in my garage with one of these because really? it made me realize how slow yeah. that machine all -in -ones is. All-in-ones used to be so slow, but they really, really increased in productivity this year. Uh, yes! <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. And mine, number two, is the Nintendo Switch. Uh, I was super excited about this. This is a console. It is a handheld. It is the great-grandson of the Game Boy, which could have been an epic fail, but it turns out it was actually not. So it has long-lasting battery, an excellent growing list of games, including the indies, and this was an instant hit, whether you're into mobile gaming mm -hmm. on the go, in your car, or on an airplane, or you're more of like a sit-on-the-couch, just kind of have a chill gaming session kind of guy or gal, like I am. So it's it's a great hit, Nintendo Switch. It was one of my favorites of this year. Zelda still your favorite? Zelda, yes. God, mm. I'm in love with that game. She is. Oh, so good. Samsung Galaxy Note 8. Gotta say, we were curious if Samsung could recover from the whole Note 7 fire debacle thing. So true. <laughs> Dang, if they didn't. Google's Pixel 2 XL might have a better camera. That's a thin thin better though. But the Note 8 didn't ship with massive screen problems. The S Pen offers productivity for power users while uh, the camera, I gotta say, is very nice. Yes, it still offers up a lot of clarity on that camera. So clarity. I was pretty I was pretty happy with it when I got to play with my friend's phone. I'm so jealous of him. I love a Samsung <laughs> Note 8. It's so pretty. Do you like it better than the Pixel 2 XL? Pixel X, Pixel 2 XL. Pixel 2 XL. <laughs> and then it'll be the Pixel 3 it's, XL. It's a toss up. It's a toss up. It's really hard to choose, but the, the pen, the S Pen is really cool, so it's kind of got me there. Really? Yeah, I really like I've it. But I can't use it because I have Google Fi, so I'm stuck could, with the Pixel. Ah, get a real carrier. <laughs> this is a real carrier. <laughs> and number four is the OnePlus 5T. So the camera on this one could also be better as well, but it's a $500 phone, but it has that flagship performance. It hangs with Google and Samsung's finest and it is pretty impressive. It's got a dual SIM slots and it's got eight gigs of RAM, which is, to be honest, ridiculous, but hey, it's future-proofing. <laughs> and OnePlus is, they're a workhorse. They're a company that listens to its users. So if you're looking for something and if you ever have a complaint, I've always seen them include the proper upgrades in their newest phone. So I was really happy with the 5T as far as $500 mm -hmm. phone go phones go. It was a great choice. With a just, it's so fast. It's so fast. It's so fast. Eight gigs of RAM. Why? It's a thing. It's in a China. thing. Yeah, apparently. That's driving <laughs> the cost of RAM up everywhere else. And number six. 
LG C7 OLED. You can spend eight grand for LG Signature OLED wallpaper series, but hey, I mean, you know, it's flat, but the C7 costs half as much, maybe less, and uses the same OLED panel and processing to deliver the best colors and blacks, inky blacks of 2017. Ooh. That said, something I found out recently is, you know, so the expensive TVs get all the attention. What is this? This is uh, the TCL 55P607, the 55 inch 4K Ultra HD Roku Smart TV. Ooh. Here's the deal, right? I cannot wait, like Robert Heron and I were talking about this, we can't wait to see what TCL follows this up with because the average television in the U.S. sells for well under $700. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not what everybody talks about, but the average TV in the U.S. sells for $700. Wow. The TCL, uh, the Roku Smart LED TV, HDR, great color, an operating system, the Roku operating system that's actually worth using and will be supported in the future, unlike a lot of the television operating systems we see on the expensive TVs. And it sold for 650 bucks most of this year. That's go pretty TCL. good. Yeah, go TCL. And another one that I wanted to mention, and this Shiny is for lenses. the photography nerds out there. This is my new favorite lens. Sony introduced the new FE 16 to 35 millimeter f 2.8 GM lens for their e-mailed cameras this year, offering up super, super wide angle full frame photography with a constant max aperture for beautiful bokeh. And then you can get those clear photos if you're taking landscape photography. So it's a premium choice. I especially really enjoyed this using it in Japan mm -hmm. because I was able to get those awesome landscape shots but yeah. then I would go up to some amazing architecture of like a beautiful temple and be able to get the entire thing in focus. It was just incredible. I love this lens so much. <laughs> so if you're a professional photographer, if you're getting into photography and you can afford it, the Sony lens is really pretty and well worth the price. It seems like you, you were taking a ton of amazing pictures on the Pixel 2 XL but yeah. there's still lots of opportunities where having a camera you know, with lenses yes. is still a big deal. Yes, absolutely. I mean, so far I've seen that digital cameras, they're okay with bokeh, but mm -hmm. still that clarity, the edge definition, you can only get that with a lens, mm -hmm. a really nice lens. Or a, a nice lens on a camera with a nice sensor. Yes. <laughs> it's just not the same to stick a lens onto the front of your phone. No, <laughs> you shouldn't do that. <laughs> Movies anywhere. Well, we've been watching all the battles going back and forth between Google and Amazon and Apple and, and whatever pony lives in your neighborhood. Um, <laughs> movies anywhere made all my movies available across all the different platforms. Well, okay. Almost. Most of the movies. Yeah. Paramount, Lionsgate, and MGM are not part of the whole Disney Bamtech powered service, so their titles don't migrate across uh, iTunes and Amazon and Google and and Vudu, mm -hmm. but still seeing movies I own on iTunes show up on Amazon or Google Play or Vudu and all moving back and forth across the other platforms. It's amazing. Unite the clans! <laughs> um, now we just need TV programs available in the same place. Yes, we do. And the rest of the movie, you know. It, it's, content is gonna be like the big battle over the next couple of years. I think you're right. I suspect there will be awful and wonderful content announcements in 2018 at CES. <laughs> could be wrong, but we'll find out. All right, what is number nine? You know, you could buy one for about f maybe 15, 20 minutes uh, earlier this year. Okay. I'm exaggerating slightly. <laughs> uh, but AMD's Radeon RX Vega 56 oh, so beautiful. took the $400 price performance crown for NVIDIA's GTX 1070 and led to NVIDIA releasing the GTX 1070 Ti, which offers near GTX 1080 performance at 450 bucks. Or maybe NVIDIA was planning to release that the whole time and the 56 <laughs> just kind of showed up at the wrong time or the right time, depending on how you're looking at that. Or maybe NVIDIA saw an opportunity to sell uh, cards to more Ethereum slash cryptocurrency yeah. miners. Stop driving up the cost, guys. Yeah, and that's, I mean, it's been crazy. Ryan and I have been tracking this all year on, on this week in computer hardware. Yeah. And we've been laughing because like, you know, okay, they're gonna, people are gonna, but I have a friend of mine in his garage is now running 25 cards. Really? Across eight machines, I think. And he's a crypto miner? He's a crypto miner. Oh my gosh. And he's got like a mixture of like 1050s, 1060s, 1070s, 1080s, because they they, mix, they use different cards for different things, the, yeah. the managing program, I guess. Yeah. It's, it's not going away, the no, mining. No, it's not. And the cost of the GPUs is not going down. And well, hopefully one day crypto mining will end up being FDIC insured, but until then I will stick with uh, USD. <laughs> well, you know, it's... You can transfer it, but... You can transfer it. But there's always a possibility of you losing your money, so... Well, same thing for the entire stock market. Sure, but the stock market isn't FDIC insured either. No, that's what I'm pointing <laughs> out. <laughs>
<laughs> but you don't get gains on the U.S. <laughs> dollars, or you barely do. We're not a finance show. I'm going <laughs> to no, walk away not. from that. Which is part of the reason why we haven't got a lot into cryptocurrency, because mm -hmm. I've had people like, should I invest in this? I'm like, I don't know. Do you, do you invest in slot machines? You is do, it more you reliable? Do. Yes. <laughs> Talk to a financial professional. Intel hasn't gotten a lot of love on this list. Uh, Intel hasn't gotten a lot of love no, this year. No, they haven't. But I got to say, the Cobby Lake Refresh 8th generation Core i7-8550U made for a massive performance boost in laptops. Uh, we tested it in the Dell XPS 13 and big bump in performance for multi-core tasks. Mm -hmm. um, doubling the cores on a CPU is a good thing, and Intel did it without hitting battery life in a cruel and brutal way. That's good. I was, I was <laughs> just, yeah! Yeah. They did a great job with that. They did do a great job with yeah. that. Oh my goodness. And we, uh, we were thinking about like other stuff. I got to give a shout out. One of the most amazing things I've heard this year, um, this is not cheap, this is not for everybody, but uh, Mr. Speakers is a company down in San Diego. They make uh, planar magnetic headphones uh, in San Diego. And what you're looking at right here is the Aeon. I got to say, I love an $800 headphone that is as good as or better than the company's $1,800 flagship. Oh. This is as close as I will get to strapping $20,000 speakers on the sides of my skull. <laughs> I got some saving up to do, but I, I gotta, it's been an amazing couple years for speaker and headphone manufacturers yeah. delivering amazing sound for less money. Yeah, which is great. We like this. Especially for us consumers. Oh I'm very happy goodness. about that. Got a tech product that made your year. We want to hear about it. Email ask at techthing.com or tweet at techthing at snubs or at Patrick Norton because we are listening <laughs> and waiting. We have not yet heard the lovely Google Home Max, which is essentially a Sonos from Google by way of Google Home. <laughs> but we do, ladies and gentlemen, have yet another screened device, a new Amazon ECHO, the Spot. Ooh. It's a little tiny echo with a screen. <laughs> It's kind of like the show, but yeah. designed for a completely different purpose. It's a uh, it's a different one. So it's it's currently a hundred and thirty dollars. So it's a little bit pricey, but this one is specifically used for a very specific use case scenario. It's an alarm clock first and foremost, and it kind of reminds me of a chumby. Do you guys remember chumbies? I remember chumbies. I remember chumbies too, but this is it was much a smarter. In a bean bag. Yeah, it you was. Know, for the kids. <laughs> this one is smarter and it's faster, which is a really nice uh, idea. So you can find this, of course, over at Amazon's website. Um, keep in mind they have a couple of different colors. There's a white one and a black one. I got the black one to test myself. Uh, I purchased this out of pocket to do the review and I might actually keep it. And here's the reason why I like the idea of pushing my phone out of the bedroom <laughs> to help with my sleep because I am or a terrible sleeper. Yes, I, I like I lack sleep. It's terrible. Uh, but I also want to keep the functionality of smarts available to me whenever I need them. So the ability to you know get uh, information about the weather and my calendar events in the morning without having to touch my phone is kind of a blessing to me. I like that idea. So it's an echo, it's a screen. Yes. It's got four mics in the top so it can do the whole voice control right. exactly. lifestyle. Yeah, and it's got the speaker down on the bottom. So it's got a 1.4 inch speaker built in, which is mm -hmm. on par with the dot. It's a little bit better, but not great. It's good enough for vocals, for speaking, so you can talk to it, or you can call people if you want to. Mm -hmm. uh, it can also connect to external speakers via Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and 3.5 millimeter jacks, which nice. is awesome. And you can turn up and down the audio. You can mute the camera, which there is a camera on the front of it, with the button at the top. You can also mm -hmm. mute the mic with the same button, and you can turn it off completely by holding down on that button as well. So luckily you can turn it completely off if you don't need it. Uh, unfortunately with this, and you probably already noticed, you can't change the viewing angle at all. It just sits like that, and that's the only option you have. <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. It is kind of glossy though. So if right. you're in a very bright room, wherever you're using this, you might run into issues if there's uh, like a window behind you. Or you can use it for uh, communicating to planes when you're lost in the woods. Okay, <laughs> there you go. Uh, 
Um, now, I did find out that Amazon is selling a adjustable stand for an extra $20. <laughs> so if you want to adjust it, you totally can. Yay. Uh, there are not a lot of changes that you can do on the device itself within the settings, other than switching between 12 different clock faces. As you can see here, I have a pretty little clock there. You can change which notifications you get on the front screen, so you would be able to slide it back and forth and see what notifications you have. And you can also set the alarm. And that's about it. Hmm. The camera can be disabled in the settings if you don't want it on, so that's just completely software disabling. But it is there to allow you to drop in or to do video calling with other people that have Amazon devices or the application on their phone. Hmm. So you can still use it, and you can also do okay. audio calls with people that have dots or the original or second generation of the original Echo, too. So you do have those options. If you want to leave it on, you can. I don't really like having a camera, especially for an alarm clock that's going to be sitting in my bedroom. So I would probably cover I can't it up. Imagine why. Now the problem is, <laughs> the problem is, if you cover this up with a sticker, it's also used for auto brightness. So if you cover it up, the screen might be too dim or too bright. But you can turn this up and down in the settings manually. Oh, cool. Though you would have to switch down. You would have to swipe down and then change it up and down right there. So you do have that option, but. I'm probably just going to put a sticker over it, to be honest, because <laughs> it creeps me out a little bit. 2017 wasn't as bad as 2016 for, for violations of security. That's but true. And Amazon is quite good with encryption protocols. And it, from my experience mm -hmm. with Wireshark,ing their products, I haven't seen any issues with encryption. So I'm, I feel comfortable with them. Nonetheless, there are always <laughs> vulnerabilities with new software updates. So I much. I'm much more happier just covering it up with a sticker. I could put a cute little Sailor Moon sticker on the front and be perfectly cool with that. So it is kind of cool to see the cloud cam, though, from mm -hmm. the rooms at home, which I reviewed previously. Uh, so I could also see this like sitting in your office at work, sure. and you could, you know, you could check in with your kids at home and check in the, on the cloud cam and make sure that they're doing their homework or something. Like there's <laughs> some cute possibilities with it. I need a cloud cam on a robot to follow them around right? the house. But as you far as able, connecting to, you're it. able to call into your camera yeah. on your front door. You're able to call into the camera on your living room and, yeah. and then talk to the cats. I could talk cats. to my cats, which was super cool. Computer, show me living room. Okay. There's my house. So this is the cloud cam, so I can supposedly talk to him. Starbuck, hi baby. That's okay, I will acknowledge your existence. <laughs> oh, look at Luna. <laughs> Luna, hi Luna. <laughs> Luna. You can also watch videos on it, including the cloud cam video, but it's kind of small. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to make out all the details on it because it's a small device. It's a 2.5 inch screen. It's 480 pixels wide. And I do have to announce, there is no YouTube currently because of the arguments between Google and Amazon. Is there Amazon Prime Video? There is. So you can watch Amazon Prime videos, and On you can watch movie trailers. On that 2.5 inch screen. Yay! <laughs> I don't suggest watching videos on that. It's just not worth it. It's tiny. It's not worth it. Plus, it kind of cuts, cuts off on the sides. Otherwise, you can zoom out on everything, and then you can see the whole rectangle of your video. But it just doesn't look good. So and when the screen is half the size of the screen of your phone, <laughs> not the best cinematic experience. Exactly. Well, how did it work as an alarm? Did it wake you up? Yeah, it did. As an alarm, it worked perfectly. I was really happy with it, uh, just like you would expect it to. And to turn it off at the end, you would say, um, name of your device, off and then it would just turn off the alarm. So it works really well Does and you can set the audio, you can make it like get louder over time or you can set it to be super loud and just wake you up suddenly, however you want. I prefer the gradual increase in audio so that's what I set it up to do and it worked wonderfully. I was very happy with it as an alarm. What does it do if you say ECHO five more minutes or is there a sleep mode or anything like that? I didn't try that. We should try that. <laughs> Now, it does have some quirks. Sometimes the changes in the settings, I've noticed that they don't save. Like I tried to change the mm -hmm. alarm clock sound, and I tried to change the clock front interface, and I would have to reboot it to make it take Ooh. that into effect. It will probably be fixed in software. Mm -hmm. It's probably, or they could like add a little save button into the settings, but currently it's just supposed to auto save whenever you change something, mm -hmm. and then you exit out to the home screen. So that's a bug, I would assume so. <laughs> and given it's the first day this has released, I wouldn't be surprised if they will fix that in their updates. I also wish the screen took up the whole front 
and didn't have such a gigantic bezel because I feel like that area that could really, mm -hmm. really inc uh, like increase the uh, the screen size of this. It would look a lot better if they were able to increase it all the way to the edge. You don't like the little tiny screen Not with the really. big bezel and the it camera. It looks great on the as top. a clock, but for video, <laughs> no way. Not so much. So I also wish they would remove the camera. Like maybe they could add an option to remove the camera or have a camera removed option on the website for less money. I'd be okay with that. So. You're concerned about the camera. Yes. There's some firmware issues. Yes. But you're probably going to keep it because yeah. it does a great job as an alarm clock and it lets you access all the stuff you want to talk to your phone about. Yeah. You still might return it though. I might return it. So here's the reason why. Um, over the time that Amazon has released all these Echo devices, they continually put, put all these devices to these crazy discounts just weeks or months after release. So there is no point in spending $130 on this if you are just going to use it as an alarm clock and just for like notifications in the morning. I would highly recommend waiting like a couple of months or waiting after Christmas because they continually put this stuff on discount. Like right now everything is on discount before Christmas. We'll right. probably see the same thing happen on Prime Day in the summertime. So if you don't mind waiting, I would totally wait. <sighs> until they actually put it on that steep discount. And then maybe they'll have a second generation that doesn't have a camera. Hey, hey. So that's what I would recommend. I do like the product though, and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a really great alarm clock. I really like it, it's cool. The notifications are awesome. And I like that I can see my cloud cam uh, videos from right. other rooms. That's very nice, it's Where a nice little cats? feature. There's going to be a ton of voice control, home automation, and Internet of Things things at CES 2018. What are you curious about? What do you want us to see us cover in email? Ask at techthing.com. We'll go hunt down your favorite product categories. If you're a fan of Tech Thing, make sure you subscribe at techthing.com on iTunes or youtube.com slash techthing. That makes sure you get each and every episode. And if you want to take it to the next level, consider contributing to the show at patreon.com slash techthing can't donate, no worries. Please take the time to send us questions, tips, and to share the show with your friends and family. Give our video the thumbs up on YouTube, like our Facebook page. It all helps keep the show rolling. Thank you so much for supporting Tech Thing, no matter how you do it. Ed writes in, I use IPVanish as my VPN installed on my phone. Just recently, I have read bad reviews such as Bad Connection, etc. What is the best paid VPN software that is out there in the market? From Ed. So first off, if a VPN works for you and it has really awesome speeds, you might want to just ignore all the reviews mm -hmm. that you see online. Not only might yeah. they be paid reviews, they might be different networks that they work on, different right. ISPs, different hardware, different operating systems. Everything is different and makes the VPN review very sometimes greatly. So some VPNs work great on Windows, but not on Android, for example. Some ISPs might have much worse VPN performance than others. Uh, not because they might be throttling traffic, mm -hmm. although some do, but because of the hardware that they are using. So yeah. you might run into a lot of issues, and I would not take reviews as the number one reason to buy a VPN. Yeah, I mean, there's also a whole bunch of websites out there that exist uh, to promote affiliate sales for specific VPNs or hosting services or so whatever true. they are. And they have amazing graphics and lots of links and very little hard data based on reviews. <laughs> and it's really, really hard to review something nationwide. I mean, PC Mag sends drivers all over the United States when they're doing their speed tests through mobile networks. And you'd have to send people with all kinds of different hardware all over the United States to do something similar for VPNs. While we're thinking about VPNs, if you're in Kansas and you're accessing a server in Texas by way of a VPN that is in France or exits in France, guess what? You're adding the whole of the Atlantic Ocean twice before the packets get from Texas to your house in mm -hmm. Kansas. Um, so here's the thing. Distance is almost always going to be the worst thing. You know, the farther away you connect, the, usually the lower your speed is on a VPN. Right. Or sometimes you're just using a VPN server that's overloaded. Uh, you know, I generally recommend using the closest VPN location to your home uh, or the automatic setting in the VPN client. Um, because sometimes, that said, like sometimes shifting a city or a region or two over will speed things up. Yeah, For that's what true. it's <laughs> worth though, generally speaking, the farther you get from home, the slower a VPN runs for you. Yeah. 
And like I mentioned before, hardware could be an issue that can totally be a problem. Uh, older Androids or older iOS devices, they don't have the same kind of horsepower built into them, the same specs, to handle the encryption calculations without slowing down. Uh, a lot of routers might also mm -hmm. have this issue. So running a VPN on your router is often a very slow experience, not to mention technically hard to install. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Or in some cases, if you run the VPN on the router, you can't access your bank without turning oh, yeah, off the VPN in point. the router. It's something yeah. I've run into. As far as IP Vanish goes, uh, it has a reputation for really increasing latency, i.e. making you wait a really long time between hitting a server and getting an answer back. Speed-wise, it's probably not bad, but for example, PC Magazine saw a 253.33% increase in latency yeah. uh, in their testing. That's a pretty big leap. Uh, that's a pretty nice roundup. They looked at a whole bunch of VPNs up on PCMag.com. Wow. So if you do a Google search for fastest VPN, Ed, you're going to get a lot of answers. Mm -hmm. There are VPNs that work well for most people, but you never know how a given VPN will perform on your hardware on your network. That said, there are three VPNs that seem to almost always make the short list of people that are testing uh, VPNs for performance. Pure VPN, PIA, Private Internet Access, and NordVPN. Those show up all the time. So I ran some speed tests, speedtest.net, some internet speed tests from my work desktop. And with no VPN, I was getting 155 megabits per second down, 24 megabits per second up, and 11 millisecond speed times. Okay. Uh, PIA was giving me 153.5 down, 21 up, and 72 millisecond speed times. Okay. And pure VPN in streaming mode, which is one of their performance modes, uh, is 13.3 down, 7.85 up, and 115 millisecond ping times. What? That was my reaction. That's and I, terrible. Well, pure VPN, it turns out, was routing me through Chicago while uh. Uh, PAA was on local servers. So mm -hmm. I restarted pure VPN on my browser. And then I got 173 megabits per second down, 23 megabits per second up, and 18 millisecond ping times off of pure VPN. Okay, that's a lot better. <laughs> yeah, and then pure VPN offers what they call like different modes. So there's like a security mode, there's a streaming mode, there's a this mode, there's a that mode. I threw it into security mode and I got 165 megabits per second down, 23 megabits per second up and again 18 millisecond ping times. Those are all going through a server down in LA. Okay. And just for fun, I turned off the VPN and ran the tests again and now I was getting 125 megabits per second down, 22 megabits per second up and 20 millisecond ping times. Interesting. And I was, I was sitting there and I was so like... So it went down. Yeah, and I've heard this reported and I've seen people talking about this. Like there is some crazy results you see in some cases. Um, in some time, some ISPs shape your traffic or they have a particularly poor oh. route to the server you're connecting to and in those cases a VPN can actually speed up your your download speed you get better bandwidth uh, because yeah. they dodge or remove the restrictions whether that's a server on a bad route between here and the server at the other end and back or because your ISP for example, as we got as we got closer to the middle of the day, mm -hmm. and the internet activity goes up on the business services that we the business service that is our ISP, yeah. I've known you know <laughs> speeds go down, and apparently speeds yeah. are going down because they're throttling the bandwidth, or perhaps our local router is throttling the bandwidth. Who knows? Mm -hmm. If you got a suggestion for a vast VPN, if you got a question about security, email asketechthing.com or tweet at snubs or at Patrick Norton or at techthing. We got a tweet from Lyle who says, at TechThing, is there a way to check if the wall sockets in my home or office is supplying too much power? For reasons known to Thor, my electronics get cooked when connected to certain outlets. Oh my oh, goodness. Oh, that sounds scary. Well, if you take like a 120 volt device to Europe and plug it into a 220 volt socket, or if somebody does really something particularly insane and rewires your house, yeah. you'll probably notice things exploding. <laughs> If things occasionally or once in a while or after a long time kind of stop working, die, uh, it sounds like you're suffering from transient voltages or surges or spikes. What? Well, surges, right? Okay. Um, voltage spikes, if you want to get fancy. There's an entire article on Wikipedia that'll walk you through the whole oh. concept of fast, short duration electrical transients and voltage. Interesting. Um, yeah. So. What was kind of fascinating for me is I was thinking like, why would it happen on one circuit in the house? And it turns yeah. out there's a whole bunch of reasons. So number one, get a surge protector for the gear on those outlets if you want to use them. 
Um, number two, I suspect if it was a power outage or a grid problem or a mm. lightning strike, it would affect everything in your house and melt it all down. Remember yeah. the thing we had last week with the thing in the house and the smoking TV? That's true. <laughs> yeah, so you probably have an internal surge caused by something inside of your house. So you want to figure out what else is attached to that circuit that might be causing the surge. Look for appliances with big motors starting and stopping on the same circuit. Mm -hmm. AC compressors, refrigerators, dryers. Does you know your significant other or you have a particularly giant hair dryer that it sucks down a tremendous amount of wattage. <laughs> that would be me. You know, <laughs> um, you know, the motorized stuff especially can cause voltage spikes or inductive flyback because when the motor stops turning, um, stuff happens. <laughs> uh, I could explain, but I would get it wrong and you would get upset with me. Um, <laughs> static electricity is a thing. And you know, it has to hit 3,000 volts before you feel it. Much lower specs can hammer electronics if they're particularly sensitive. Uh, arcing is a big one. Faulty switches, mm. breakers, contacts, uh, improperly assembled outlets in your wall where the, maybe the ground isn't set up correctly. So that brings me to three, which is kind of important. If you have problems with certain circuits in your house, call an electrician. Make sure nobody's done anything profoundly stupid with your wiring. Having had a house rewired a few years ago, it happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we got it fixed. Uh, arcing, ground faults, loose connections can all create transient voltages or voltage spikes in yeah. your house. Uh, for example, I had a garage circuit that would drop from 120 volts down to 109 volts. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, when I ran my shop vac or my compressor. Oh. Some of the wiring wasn't up to spec, causing a mini brownout and then possibly causing surges when the big motor inside the vacuum or my compressor shut back down and then the voltage oh, would no. spike back up. I think got killed, but I remember like I was I was testing. But the, it could have. It could have. <laughs> so it's not as common these days, though. But a lot of computer problems, especially lost data, uh, are related to power problems. Uh, you know, uninterruptible power supplies and surge protectors are your friends. Mm -hmm. uh, Definitely run a UPS on like your primary machine or your yes. expensive electronics, uh, and you know, at the very least, run surge protectors because they will protect your devices from. Fast, short From duration, electrical things. transients, and voltage. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say that over and over again. Spikes. <laughs> short duration, electrical transients. A lot of S's in that. It's sentence. very fancy. <laughs> and remember, once in a while, put down the phone, step away from the screen, close the laptop, and do something analog. <sighs> like Greg. So Greg says, hi, Patrick and Shannon. Love your show and all the useful information you so readily share. While it may be warm where you are, I spent this last weekend in October, this was a while back, <laughs> being very analog, teaching eight grade students snowshoe making at the 19th annual winter camp camping symposium at YMCA Camp Miller near Sturgeon Lake, Minnesota. Great group of 200 plus folks Wow, 200 that enjoy winter camping. And as an added bonus this year, we woke to six inches of fresh snow on Friday morning. Nice. We have people attending from as far away as Japan, as well as warm parts of the country like San Carlos, California. Thanks for the great show from Greg. I love the pictures he sent too. They're so cool. Yay. You know, I got to wear snowshoes when I was living in Alaska. Good times. We actually go snowshoeing. I just got snowshoes, a new set of snowshoes for my eldest son. His snowshoes are going to our youngest son. Aww. And uh, hopefully we will actually the big get ones. snow. There's been now we use the the performance snowshoes. Oh, there's nothing wrong with you know using the giant snowshoes yeah, that the, look like I, we would have the brackets. big ones. <laughs> There's good times. But I, I, yeah, the whole like walking the snowshoe around each other. I'm I like the modern snowshoes. Uh, yeah, they are I sleek can, and I fast, can, and I, I fall on my face that. and tree walls <laughs> less often. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. And if you have an analog pick, feel free to send them to us, ask at techthing.com. We would love to feature them in a future episode. Thank you. With that, ladies and gentlemen, the new year is on its way. CES is coming, and we we are here for you. Yay! Email ask at techthing.com. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Shannon Morris. We'll see you, well, next year. Yeah, next thing. year. Happy New Year. I get to say that once a year. It's so exciting. <laughs> Bye. Do you have exciting New Year's plans? Um, nope. <laughs> I don't have any New Year's plans at all this year. Do you stay home, watch Netflix, and chill? Most likely. Quite literally chilling. Chilling? Yes, Freezing. with my peppermint ice cream. Aww. Which is so good. Oh so goodness. good. If you haven't been watching my vlogs, I went to Safeway this weekend and I bought three tubs of the peppermint ice, ice cream from Dryers because it is so, so flippin' good. I just, I, I had to, and it's limited edition. First taste was not free. It's limited edition, so I had to make sure I stocked up. It is so, so delicious. 
Well, like I said, I have spare freezer space in the basement. <laughs> you know, I might take you up on that. Like next time I go to Safeway, I might just buy like all of the peppermint ice cream and take. My it wife's over gonna your be like, "What is this?" <laughs> okay, no more than six gallons. Okay. How's that? We'll put a cap okay. on it at six gallons. That's probably all they have at Safeway.